how much I love Stella Kid as a woman of color, everything that she does and what she stands for. I know everybody's here for the love and the, you know, the, you know, the, the Taylor Kidney of it all, but I'm here for who Stella Kid is. Thank on her you. Own. <laughs> Listen, Taylor Kidney is great too. I just, of course, I just think that, you know, here's the thing is he, he established himself. You know what I mean? Bam, foundation of the show. And mm -hmm. then Stella came on and she had to, you know, establish herself too. And now it's been long enough that people are like, all right, like, I, like, I, I get down with Stella. <laughs> you know what I mean? On, on her own, she's already the, the shiznit. Let's use yeah. that word. Thank you. Yeah, I know. See, I was having a hard time saying, I, I want to, I'll say, <laughs> I, I, <sighs> We're not saying bad words on the on the IG. No, you can. You can say oh, it on the live. I can. Oh, yeah, I with Stella. That's what I want to say. I like, with Stella too. <laughs> See, I don't leave you out there solo, cursing by yourself. This is this is <laughs> all. This is us together in okay. in this together, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, we have a lot to unpack from yes. last night's episode. But before that, th there's so many similarities between you and Stella. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about, uh, like, it, was she already built that way? Did that inspire the writers? I think that I, I, think that I came in and the writers were kind of just like, all right, let's see what she does. And then I showed up as like my gregarious self. And they were like, oh, okay, we can work with this. Mm -hmm. The whole, I mean, and it's really interesting, even the like the story about leadership and her not seeing herself as a leader. It was such a, it was such a compliment to have a storyline like that. And I felt very in sync with Stella's journey where I was like, me? <laughs> uh, uh, are you sure? And so that was, you know, that was really fun to, to play with and to continue, you know, to go on the journey of, you know, confronting imposter syndrome and and experiencing uh -huh. so much love and support and people looking at her and saying like you can do this and very similar i think you know people on the show uh, mentors like eamon walker and mm -hmm. you know eigenberg you know looking at me and being like this is something you can do you can take on more responsibility you can take on more leadership as an actress and um, and as a, as a person and be being very intimidated, but then because of that support and because of that love and because of, you know, somebody saying like, I see this in you, it helped mm -hmm. see it in myself. And it's not just that it's, I feel like she sees it in everybody else though. Like yes. I love when she had the, when she was, she just looked around and said like, we should have more of these team, especially like teens that are you know women of color and yep. she was just like we, we need more of them in the in these ranks in in as firefighters and yep. instead it, it's like i mean and look what happened like a few episodes ago when one came back and she just she needed help and she knew that stella was gonna help her yeah that's yep. so impactful one thousand percent and i think that stella you know from what we know about her she comes from a lot of uh instability and instability her parents weren't there her last marriage she was you know married to an addict and so there's a lot of kind of this going on where she hasn't been able to rely on people and the firehouse and and the cfd is one of the one of the only places in her life and then now even you know severide one of the mm -hmm. only things that she's really been able to anchor to and i think that's also something that she wants to provide to these young women and it really hit her in a way that was very overwhelming when seeing that it's like, that is how this girl viewed Girls on Fire, was like mm -hmm. a steady rock. Like, okay, I am in trouble. This is where I'm going to go. And for her mm -hmm. to be able to give that when it wasn't something that she experienced growing up, I think is like huge, huge for her. But it's been really magical to see from the audience point of view and even here in the comments, all of the women who are here and saying Stella is the best. I love Stella. It's all of those things that you're also empowering us mm. through that character. I hope you know that. Thanks. I think I think it's really awesome to be able to play 
um, a woman who is navigating uh, the, the journey of becoming a leader in a male dominated field, mm -hmm. what that looks like and to be, you know, in a relationship and really like, you know, sexually embodied and how does that translate over into, you know, her career and her leadership. She's really, you know, we're seeing that she is vulnerable and she's brave and she's sexual and she's, you know, sensitive and like she's, she's a full, she's a fully fleshed out character. She's not a caricature, which right. I appreciate and just kind of like nod to the writers and give thanks for that. My, one of my favorite moments, and it really reminded me of my life, it was when she she goes to her first class for the lieutenant for the lieutenant test and you have all these all these people who are the naysayers and they want to say why you're not going to make it like right. i love those people because i love when un people underestimate me Thank and you. people underestimated her underestimated her huh totally and that's been and that's been her journey you mm -hmm. know what i mean like coming up as as a woman in the in the cfd it's like that is literally something that she's had to deal with the entire time, which also I think whether she wants to admit it or not, that's also part of the reason why she didn't want to be a leader or consider herself a leader is because it's like, ugh, like that's so much. <laughs> it takes, a, it's a lot of energy to stand out. You know what I mean? You kind mm -hmm. of, you put a target on your back. Um, but I, but I love that it's like, you know, she's like, no, I can do this. Like, I've been doing this. <laughs> like, I like, I got this. Watch this. But with this squad that she has behind her that are willing to make space, I refuse to even think that Stella is going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in these comments, I'm like, I'm about to address the elephant in the room because I also saw that preview for next week. We're not ready to say goodbye. Like, I I'm saying goodbye to April. And to Dr. Manning I, oh, on Chicago, on Chicago oh. Med, I'm like, I'm not ready to give up Bella Kid and Miranda, <laughs> Miranda Ray Mayo. Listen, I'm not either. So fingers crossed. It, you know what I mean? Like, I am also not ready. I think that um, I there's just a part of this industry, though, that I think is very healthy. And it's good practice um, at just practicing detachment and really like um, embracing the impermanent nature of life and how everything changes, everything grows. So no matter what happens, I mean, this has been one of the most transformational experiences of my life. Um, but, you know, you always just gotta be ready for, you always gotta be ready for what might happen. I'm really <laughs> sad with that response because it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't give me a lot of hope I, I keep thinking like 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 um i'm like kelly can like can he give her his spot that's better than an engagement ring in my no, opinion but, but would you but would you want would you want kelly to not be well, to on... make space for her he can find another another firehouse think about though think about how that would set stella up do you know what I'm I saying? guess. I guess. I'm I just being know, greedy. I don't know what's going to happen, but if that were to happen, the, it would be super challenging because then again, everything her, her she's had to deal with people in the department saying that yeah. you know, she is where she is is because of him. So then if he gives her his spot, it was like that's why you have your spot, you know? Yeah. So I know. I, I don't I hope I hope Kelly doesn't give her his spot. It would be very it would be very sweet. It's something that he totally probably would be willing to do because he's that kind of a man. But um but I I I hope that she kind of goes off and like has her own path and forges her own, you know, destiny. <laughs> Well, but if that leads her elsewhere, then do we, ha does that necessarily go with, you know, the stellar ride of it all? I, I mean, we'll see. I think, I think that will be some really delicious content to jump into. What does that look like? What does that look like in a relationship where it's like you have, you know, two officers, two people who are holding rank, like in a, in a modernized world that's filled with our own you know, um, sexist ideas of what mm -hmm. it means to be in a relationship. How does 
how does that translate? How do they deal with that? That could be some really juicy, delicious content. Because the, at the end of the day, I do think that those two characters, like, they have, they have a perspective on life that most people don't since they deal with death so often. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a very strong foundation. And I think that they can, I think that they can work through almost anything. So I would welcome, it's like whatever challenges that the writers would want to throw our way because they have that sturdy foundation. And it's like, what, and for two characters who are so used to abandonment and you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Turbulence and inconsistency in their past. It's like, what does it look like for them to provide that to each other? Like that, oof, that sounds delicious. <laughs> I love your energy. You're amazing IRL. Mm, thank you. Thank That's you. Young You're people too. saying I'm so glad to be doing this interview with you. It's a collaboration. It's like you giving it to me and I'll give it to you. And we just like. Oh. And you have to see these comments. Everybody's like, if, if Stella goes, we riot. So, <laughs> so I don't know. We need a. I don't know. We need some NBC representation here in this in this chat room because I'm like to ease us all to ease ease all of our like so that they know like we're not willing to part with our with our Stella. I will say though, I mean, when I was on the as an actor, when we were in the midst of shooting, you know, uh, maybe like three episodes ago, four episodes ago, and she was, you know, on the journey of you know, uh, preparing for the lieutenant's test. I asked one of our executive producers, I was like, does she, what's gonna happen? Does she, you know, make lieutenant um, so that I can prepare as an actor? And he was like, are you sure you wanna know? Why do you wanna know? Go on the ride. And I was like, that's a great, like, that's a great point. Like ride that journey of, of, the of the unknowing you know what I mean and then as an actor it's like I can be a lot more present with with her journey so and and it was such a payoff Ooh, my neighbor she's she's moving some thanks but um <laughs> oh my god but um but um it was such a payoff to find out that she did make lieutenant like I was so happy that I didn't know you know what I mean so everybody it's okay <laughs> like we're, we're all going on the journey together and whatever we find out we'll find out together and it'll be great <laughs> well I see that a lot of people are saying spin-off spin-off we could see a spin-off and then we could bring Adrian back and y'all are at the right they Listen. all be at the same firehouse. Listen, uh, running, having our own shenanigans, and Stella's leading. Yes, I would. And then we that. have gr more girls on fire. I mean, I mean, Mouch, Mouch could come with all his antics with yes. with his his uh, old donuts. Yes. And, like I'm so I'm so obsessed with Mouch this season. I have to admit, not so secretly anymore. He's so freaking funny. He's one of the best actors I've ever had the opportunity to learn from. And I think that this season, the show really like utilized him and, and just all of the things that he's amazing at in such an incredible way. And it was really awesome to watch. And he's so like humble. He's like, ah, I don't know. You know what I mean? He's, he's like, so funny. He's so funny. Like I just, I, I don't know. I I love Stolte. He's he's amazing. It's it's really been a fun ride this season just to see everybody. But of course, I'm here for for my girl Stella. <laughs> um, oh, and see, people want Gabby back. They they said we could do a spinoff. It'll be Gabby, and it could oh be Stella, God. and then we have Adrian coming back, and then it's like you know, girl power. Listen, any <laughs> I welcome any opportunity to work with Monica Raymond. She's I love her. Yeah, she's another one that I like learned so much from um, while she was on the show. Like, I just, I have, I have nothing but love and respect for that woman. And like, whatever, whatever she does, if she ever wanted to come back, that would be, you know what I mean? That would be amazing. 
And I just, it's really awesome to watch her continue to soar and, you know, run her own show. And yeah. Yeah. yeah I keep Monica telling Derek Haas. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> on one, on one of the comments, somebody said Monica is a goddess. And I was like, I agree. Oh yeah. I, I love her new show. And, um, but I love that she still likes to pop in occasionally. Derek Haas was, te was teasing me uh, earlier this season that, you know, the finale is supposed to be this huge event. So you never know who's going to pop up. And I'm like, okay, but then if we're asking, like, can John, can John Seda come back too? And there's some, I think that's the thing about, <laughs> about like the Dick Wolf universe is that like, we have access to like, just such amazing talent. And it's always so heartbreaking because you know what I mean? To see them, to see people leave. And it's also just kind of the nature of the nature of the business, the nature of life. You know what I mean? Everything comes to us, but uh, it's hard. It's hard to see good people go. Well, I really love the, the exchange that we saw last night between um, Casey and Kelly, where they're kind of doing like the bro talk, like, Oh, Kelly's like, well, you know, I, I kind of want to propose. And then the other one, you know, he don't oh, take your own advice because I mean, come on. Uh, fun. Like, so I really love seeing them together with doing like the bro emotional feelings talk because you, you need that. Yeah, like 1000%. Like they well, I just also I don't know, their their characters have been so like, they're just they're like brothers so throughout the entire series it's like we see them butt heads and kind of you know th th there's like this competition thing and I think this season we really saw them like settle into manhood ugh, like in such a delicious way where they're having these conversations about their emotions and their love lives and you know, a lot of times, most of the time, it's like we see women, you know what I mean, having those conversations. So yeah, that's what, I, exactly what I was trying to say. I want to hear more about I want to hear more about Ritter's love life. I want I want Ritter. Like I'm I'm gonna need for us to like see some Ritter love scenes. I'm gonna need Ritter to start dating some more people like that's actually that's that's actually like uh, a world that I would like to see more of you know, fingers crossed. I need a whole spinoff of Herman and all his kids and, and his wife. I'm done like that, that, uh, when they, when they were, when he was doing like the baby burritos, <laughs> that was such a funny episode. Bottles? Swaddle? Yes. Nobody would. Yes. Yeah, swaddle. I don't have any kids. Can you tell? It's like, <laughs> I'm like, it's a baby burrito. Cause with a cat, it's like a burrito. It's the little baby burritos, you know, little, the little, <laughs> little crunch wrap Supremes. <laughs> so I, I like I'm fascinated by I, I I mean I love him so much David is is amazing that elevator episode was shot so freaking cool just the season has been, like which have been your favorites I like honestly Joe and David are just incredible actors like I love that episode I love the episode where we feature Mouch um and his huge save I I also I loved um I loved the episode where we got to see Bowden and Kylie um kind of learning each other um I'm trying to remember the with the stand-up desk where oh um, yes 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 that was I, so funny I loved it so much he, he so didn't want that desk but he took it anyways and he still did it you know he's so sweet He's, I mean, Eamon Walker is a powerhouse of, of a man and an actor. And it's, it's literally, I mean, it's the, it's been one of the greatest gifts of me being on this show has me meeting him and getting to learn from him and him being willing to open up and teach me. And especially as like, you know, I'm a black woman, I'm a mixed race, you know, mm -hmm. black woman, like having him just kind of hold space for me to navigate that experience while being on a network television show while in the midst of the pandemic and the racial reckoning and mm -hmm. everything like going on um having him as like this rock um has been i mean one of the greatest gifts of like my life 
That's beautiful. I, I feel like I, I'm not sure. I mean, I've met him a few times and we've done the one Chicago days in, in Chicago, which I miss so much. Um, but I, I'm not sure if he's, he's same as his character, but I feel like he, he doesn't like say a whole lot, but the few words he says mean so much. Girl, they be giving him monologues. Like, <laughs> they give him monologues to just, you know. But, but like in specific times, it's not always like, he's not always like running his mouth. It's like when he has something to say, it's powerful. Yes, 1,000%. 1,000%. What's your favorite one Chicago ship that's not Stella Ride? Um, I really like um, Trudy and Mouch. I love them so much. <laughs> I love them so much. I also... <laughs> I also really love Ritter and Gallo. Like, I think that they're such a phenomenal pair. I also, I mean, I just, yeah, I love them together. Like, I, in my own fantasy, um, I feel like they're the Jim and Pam, uh, like, in the office. I feel, uh -huh. I feel like that's Ritter and Gallo. Like, one day... Like, Gallo's just going to be like, oh, my God, Ritter, it was always you. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's, like, that's, like, my dream. I also really wanted for, uh, for Severide and Casey to, like, wake up and realize that, like, they were in love with each other. That's also something I just, I don't ever think it's going to happen. But, I'm here for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Two like, hot men? I know. Like, we... I, we I'm like, we need an after hours IG live for that conversation. Do you know what I'm like? I just, <laughs> I, I, that's, that's like my, my own Miranda fantasy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I just want Severa and Casey to admit that they are in love with each other and forget these women going to Puerto Rico <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and going off and being lieutenants. It's like, it's just you and me together and we get on a boat. And we just we just sail off into the sunset. NBC, are you listening? I'm here for that spinoff too. Can we have that spinoff? I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> if anybody from NBC is listening, they're like, oh my God, Maria. <laughs> Wait, but then Casey can get back with John Ecker, who I absolutely love. And then like she'll get over Casey and then you know we can have that. I I, I really like that pairing. So Wait. <laughs> Sorry? Don Ecker? Yeah, uh, I, Greg, is that his name? Greg, the guy, the guy that she was seeing briefly, the other firefighter. Oh, oh my God. Is Greg, that right? So beautiful. Like, I feel like, I feel like Brett and him together, they look like movie stars from the 40s. Like, he Thank had you. James Dean thing going on. And she like is like Marilyn Monroe, and they just look like like old Hollywood movie stars. And I was really all about it. <laughs> Listen, me too. I loved him since uh, Queen of the South, and so when I saw that he was on there, I go, "Holy crap!" And we did a we did an IG live. I'm like, I need John Ecker immediately for this Instagram. I mean, in general, I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> in general, but also for the IG live. You know that. Uh, like, huh? He's from Mexico City. Like, oh, yeah. You know, his dad is a famous novela actor. Um, you know, right? Yeah, no, I, I had... Guy no, Ecker. I had no idea. And then we were talking, and he's like, yeah, I'm fluent in Spanish. I'm from Mexico City. I was like, excuse me, what? Like, yes. She, oh, my God. Oh, yes. This is a very, this is a very, very attractive, it's a very, very attractive man. <laughs> and he play, plays guitar. He's like... He's, he's awesome. He's awesome. Let me see. Greg and Brett. His father is famous in Latin America. Oh, I, yeah. The, that's what we were just saying. John Ecker's dad is Guy Ecker, who I keep saying, I keep saying uh, they need to do something together. That would be amazing. Oh, uh, yes. Any uh, parent-child, like, talent duo is always just, like, <laughs> delicious to, to watch. Somebody was asking uh, what it's like working with Jesse Spencer. And oh. his hot accent. He's the best. <laughs> he's, he's the best. He is just like, he is like a, just a very simple, goofy, lovely man. He plays the banjo. So it's like in between setups, he just like, it's just kind of 
playing his banjo or mandolin. He's very musically talented. Wait, so are you guys collaborating? Because you sing, no? Uh-huh. So we did we did this song, um, this uh in honor of firefighters, um, working on Christmas. Um with oh. um we have a band called Kid Mayhem. And so we would do gigs, you know, every now and then. Um, and we haven't done one in a while, especially since COVID. But we put together this song and Jesse played violin on it. Yeah, Jesse's incredible. It's so cool. He plays piano, violin, uh, uh, mandolin, uh, banjo. Um, wow. Sensational. Is, is he like the perfect guy? What's wrong with him? Tell us what's wrong with him. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm absolutely kidding. Well, we need to have an episode where you guys are just performing at Molly's. But make it be on a one Chicago day so that we could be there. It would be so great. Oh, yeah, guitar. Jesse also plays guitar. Like, it would be, it would be so fun to do something like that on the show. I don't know if I don't, I don't know if we ever would but oh my god we all would have so much fun putting that together but yeah jesse yeah jesse is very talented um very very professional wonderful human he's a good he's like a great number one you know on the show I do you do you ship bretzy do i ship bretzy yeah i ship bretzy yeah i think they both i think those two characters make a lot of sense together. And um, I think that there's some, that there is definitely long game potential. You know, he is such a, he's such a straight and narrow, you know, um, classic uh, <laughs> guy, you know what I mean? Just like yeah. by the book kind of man. And she is, I think that, she's very you know um loving and 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 kind and considerate i think that they would complement each other wonderfully and they do okay um there's another question about the finale what can you tease to us about the finale and whether or not there are going to be special guests <sighs> Um, I can tell you that it wouldn't be Chicago Fire if we did not end with a crazy cliffhanger that left everybody wanting to rip their hair out. So um, get ready for that. Um, uh, what else? Guests, 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 guests. There's nothing I can really tease about guests that I can think of in this moment. Please forgive me if I'm letting you all down. Um, but that's that's the big thing is like just get ready for a cliffhanger that is going to make you all itching for episode one of season 10. Could you tease whether or not by the end of this season somebody will be leaving permanently and i'm not saying stella just in general could somebody be leaving i could i could i tease yeah uh, okay we'll do take one this is me teasing okay well who knows somebody could or could not be forever how was that take two let's take two okay take two okay take two <sighs> i don't know i mean you know the writers, they do what they want to do, and um, everybody just, it could happen. Who knows? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. That's my favorite one. Stay tuned. Or there's a roller coaster. Those are the two. I ban people from using that in my interviews. When you're teasing something, I'm like, no, stay tuned. <laughs> None of that. Okay? You find different words. <laughs> Use different words, exactly. But I got stay tuned from saying no more roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I, I have, I honestly have no idea. So if anybody leaves, I, I will be as, as shocked and heartbroken as you all. You know what I mean? I'm not in those, I'm not in those meetings yet. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm just a lowly actor, just, um, you know, saying my words and, and cashing my checks and, you know, and, and then 
eating Indian food with those checks. Um, that's, <laughs> that's a good investment. Yeah. <laughs> Someone wants to want you to know that you look stunning. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see. I'm trying to get a few more questions yeah. before I let you off the hook. Uh, Miranda want an episode with her and Tracy. Yes, I had one. I had one, and I and I kick myself every day that I just didn't do more to like insinuate that we were best friends. Like I I am so upset about it. But yes, I would love to do an episode with Stella and Tracy. That would it would be amazing. Or it's Stella and Burgess. I want to. I just I love Burgess. Oh my God, Burgess is the truth. What about med? Can we see, could, like, I would love to see you on med. Yeah, would love to go to med. I mean, two of my favorite people just left. But... Mine too. I was heartbroken. I'm like, excuse me? I know. I know. So, so I mean, we need some girl power over there. Maybe they need some kind of a fire lieutenant in-house. Something. I don't know. We're like, we do a program, like, you know maybe it's like there's some kind of a program where we start incorporating like teaching you know paramedic skills along with you know the firefighting skills and and that's somehow how med with the girls on fire i don't know but uh, a lot of people keep asking about the severide of it all so do you want to see them get engaged do I want to? Do I want to see them get engaged? I would. I would love for them to get engaged. Yeah, I think. Um, I think it's been, it's been fun watching Severide evolve on the show, and you know who he was. Um, you know when Shay was around, how mm -hmm. he, her, you know, her death. Um, and then, you know, falling in love and that woman dying. I mean, <laughs> Severide has been through a lot. So I think as a fan, you know, it's fun to watch him fall in love and like choose to, you know, like choose to commit to someone. And for Stella, I think, you know, it's been, it's been fun to watch her, you know, learn him and see whether or not she can trust him and I again I would love I'd love to see them get engaged and then navigate what that means what that feels like and all of their own traumas you know that kind of come up around that That's have, you, have, have you personally imagined what this wedding would look like I yeah like because people have asked me about it they're like what would oh, a, okay. what would a stellaride wedding look like and I just I just don't see it being very big like I see I see them I don't know like I see it like being on a boat or like I don't know it being them being in the midst of planning it and then like being like screw it and like going to city hall <laughs> like, <laughs> But we've, but we've done, you know what I mean? I think as, as fans, we've seen that that was kind of, you know, Casey and Dawson's journey. So I'm actually, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know what I mean? What the, what the writers do with, with our characters. If, you know, if an engagement happens, if a marriage happens, like how they see those two, you know, those two characters um, doing it. I have, I have this nice question from Leah. She says, do you have any advice for female firefighters? I've been a junior for two years and you're inspiring. I mean, you, I, I, I would be, I would be asking you, <laughs> you have, you have more experience as a firefighter than I do. So, so no, I don't have, I don't have any, any tips for you. I think just as a, as a person, um, as a woman, you know, coming up in a mostly male dominated field, I just would encourage you to um, not feel pressured to do things the way that everybody else does them. If there's something that comes more naturally to you to, to honor your process and to recognize that if you have a goal and you 
put yourself energetically in that direction and you continue to to move towards that goal and know that you'll get there you'll get there even if it doesn't look the way that the men around you and the other people around you are saying it should look like honor your process i guess would be my would be my advice did you have a stella growing up someone who encouraged you and told you you were enough huh? i like that question yeah yeah i think i had one of um i had a babysitter when i was really young that was always so encouraging her name was hannah <laughs> shout out to hannah shout out to hannah um but i think in my like and then in my teenage years actually it was my cousin kendra um my cousin Kendra Cruz, shout out Kendra Cruz. She was always there in the midst of like emotional turbulence. Um, just believing in me and, you know, encouraging me to go after what I wanted. I lived with her um, after I graduated high school and um, before I moved out to LA. So she has always been like a big sister, um, you know, figure for me and I like I hope oh I hope she's watching um if she, yeah I I love that woman she's um she was she was kind of like my Stella oh but Cruz are you Latina too no no because oh, you say so Cruz she, she married she married a Puerto Rican ah okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well you're Latina adjacent like <laughs> yes I really am I'm, I'm, I am but no, I'm a I'm a black girl. <laughs> I'm a black girl who looks who looks you know who looks Latina, Lat Latinx. You know, a lot of people think I'm Puerto Rican. Oh yeah, well, the thing is too that what do we we all look so different that mm -hmm. people are just used to seeing that we look a certain way. You know, like you and I could be related totally. Uh, and I'm Latina, and you're you know you're adjacent, so <laughs> people are just like. Uh, you know, they don't know where to put that box. Let me see. Right. Let me see. I saw a really good question. These go so fast. Are Stella's parents dead or are they just not around? From what I understand, they're dead. Um, and who knows? Because <laughs> people know. want them to show up and pop up at the Stella ride wedding. Exactly. Exactly. So, um... I was under I was under the impression that they were that they were dead, but um, it's it's not my it's not my universe. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I thought I thought that they were, but they may not be. Will we get more of Stella's backstory? That's a great question. Hoping, always hoping for that. Um, I think that on a show where there's so many amazing characters, it's like we have you know we have eleven regulars <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah so i think um honestly that's something that i would love to explore and i understand why it's not sometimes it's not it's not realistic that we can dive in so deep because it's like right. you know what what about ritter gallo uh tony cap you know what i mean there's so there's so many uh, Violet, you know, now coming on the show. I'm so curious about her character, where she comes from, what she right. like. Um, so yeah, so I would love, I mean, like, oof, those, yeah, those are some things that would just be delicious to dive into next season. Anything that, you know, that they give me will be delicious. But mm -hmm. I just, I recognize that we have so many other talented people that it's like, if it doesn't come around to me, it's because we're diving into, you know, some other deliciousness over there. Yeah, but we've been pitching spinoffs here, so you never know. You never know. <laughs> I love that. I, I, like, are you cool to hang for, like, five more minutes? Because yeah. I, there's a lot of great questions on here. Yeah. Um, some, somebody wants to know, and I really like this question, what type of lieutenant do you think Stella will be? I honestly, like, I really think that she... I think, I think she's going to be a fantastic lieutenant. And I think that she's going to model a lot of her style after what she's seen in Bowdoin that works. 
I just think, I just, I see her being more vulnerable. I see mm -hmm. her, I see her kind of struggling to like do it right at first. And then kind of having this process where it's like, you know what, I got to be open and honest about what I don't know and what I'm unsure about. And maybe my firefighters know and giving them an opportunity. I think she's going to be a collaborator. Um, and I don't know, like she, they might just have her, you know, hustling and doing all her work and doing all her research and, and being five steps ahead of everybody. That's also something that I could see Stella doing. Um, so we'll see. But I think no matter what, there's going to be a lot of passion. There's going to be a lot of heart. She's going to care a lot about the people that she's leading and, um, and she's going to take it hard if she, <laughs> that's the one thing I, I, any, for any Lieutenant that is, um, scary, heart wrenching and crazy to think about is like they're these people's lives are in their hands. So mm -hmm. that's, that's something that would be interesting to watch if somebody gets hurt on her watch, if somebody dies on her watch, like that's <laughs> like, uh, I think that that's going to be the hardest part for her to cope with. And I would imagine any Lieutenant, any captain, mm -hmm. any leader. I saw a comment here that I really liked. Would you like to see Bowden walk? Stella down the aisle if they if we got to see a wedding would ball oh my God. I would ball I was just I would, gonna say I would ball ball my eyes out yeah like <laughs> like yeah that would be <laughs> yeah that would be that would be a like a big tearjerker I think that would be monumental. Somebody, okay, wait, 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 wait. It was a good question. Oh, uh, who are you closest to uh, when you're not shooting? You have any close friends there? Yeah, pretty, uh, very close to David, Eamon, um, uh, Stolte, um, and their family. Um, who else? Um, <laughs> Everyone's calling out Derek. I was like, Derek, I hope you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hass is also is also wonderful. Um, I mean, yeah, I've had I like keep in touch with just about everyone. I mean, Daniel, Alberto, um, you know, like yeah, I Jesse, Taylor, Kara, like I pretty much, I pretty much have relationships with everybody outside the show. Even still, you know, Yuri. Um, a lot of people in the comments have been talking about Yuri and Otis. That oh. elevator episode, the first thing that jumped at me, like Otis. I know. I like. I I miss him all the time. I I really. That was hard. Him leaving was hard. Annie leaving was really hard. Um. But you know, it's like we continue to keep in touch like when when relationships are important you know it's like you of course in that you put in the effort and yeah but i oh I, I miss them both um all the time every day and monica like yeah lisa escobar says miranda blink once for engagement or twice for baby <laughs> y'all want this girl to get fired yeah, I know y'all y'all keep saying you don't want Stella to leave, but then you're trying to put me in a position to lose my job. I I I can't. Okay. Okay, last question, last question. If you could write a letter to kid, what would be in the letter? I really like that. I will say I do stand with the people of Palestine. I will say that. Um and you know, uh, I think it's a very complicated issue that I don't. It is. I don't super understand it, so I, I, I'm trying to learn. And I think that there is also this thing too, where it's like you know, celebrities or you know, people who are on television shows, um, you know, feeling like there's a responsibility to speak up and speak out. I think just for me, there's 
we all have a we all have a platform and mm -hmm. it's and it's a privilege to get to use that platform i just also it's important to me to clarify by saying there i i don't have a lot of experience yeah. and knowledge with this subject i think and what i think is that injustice to to a people anywhere is is an injustice to people everywhere a hundred um you know what i mean and i'm going to take it upon myself to continue to you know learn more about how to be an ally and how to um do do my part to be the change that i would like to see in the world um and uh yeah like i think i i do i do stand with Palestinians and and I love I love Israel and I love my the people that I know who live in Israel. I think that this is not a binary issue. I think right. that's actually where we're getting stuck is thinking that one truth cancels out the other. I think right. it took more of an approach of seeing like, okay, how can both things be true and how can we create solutions that are win for alls where somebody doesn't have to lose, we would live in a in a much different place and and i'm not i'm not a i'm not an expert i think i think y'all don't don't take any you know what i mean i don't think anybody should take what i'm saying super seriously or i'm not like i know <laughs> i know the answers because i don't at all that's just how i feel in my heart it's just important, I feel like, that we listen to the people who exactly. are speaking from experience yes. and make space for yes. them. Yes, yes. Well, when we're talking about the people yes. of color and Black issues, and then I see people who are not from these communities speaking out with authority, it's like, yes. they're and doing it wrong. It doesn't exist, and, and this is, how, it's like, how would you know? How would you know? It's, and I think that we all could benefit from, from coming from a place of humility and acknowledging yeah. okay this is the experience that i do have and this is what i can speak on and this is what i have no knowledge of and that i can't speak on and when we come to that place being humble enough to listen and to actually believe the people who are in that experience and who, yeah. who that is that is their life amen that's why when when there are things going on that are, don't pertain to my community, I'm I'm lear I'm reading what people are saying from those communities. I'm researching and I'm but I'm sharing their voices. And I mean, for me personally, that's what I find that's important. But okay, so so we're gonna wrap on that one, you guys. You guys had so many amazing questions. Uh, Miranda, thank you so much for spending this time with. If you want to answer more questions, I, I won't be mad at you. Listen, listen, we could do, let's do like, let's do like a few more. Let's do three. Well, I still like the question. If you would write a note, if you would write a note, to, let, let's pretend, let's pretend that you were leaving. Okay. And, and you needed to write a, 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 a little note to her saying what she meant to you. I mean, you don't need to be leaving for that, but you know. Uh, okay. I, um, I would say, I would say to Stella, I would say, dear Stella, um, it has been magnificent watching you discover your power and the effect that you have on people, the love that you are capable of, and the, the magic that you are. Um, you have forever changed me. Like my like my life my life will never be the same, um, because of you and all that you have brought out in me. Um, I love you, and I'm gonna carry you with me wherever I go. Oh, that's so beautiful. It's true. We're so we're so not ready to say goodbye though. Uh, and that's all. I mean, that's very much on the spot. You know what I mean? Just kind of. Of trying. course. But I, it would. If I was gonna write a letter, I think it would be. I would be very ceremonious about it. I would light candles, and you know what I mean, and like have on some music. I think it would be very. It's gonna be very emotional. Whatever that day, you know what I mean, does come. I just, I just, you know, I just hope that it's 
something that is like, it's a process. Um, it's a graceful, you know what I mean? Transition. Cause, cause I have no control over it. No matter, no matter right. what, it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, we'll follow you anywhere anyway. So as long as that's known, um, <laughs> we, we have an aspiring actress asking if you have any advice. Um, my advice would be, it's like, all I know is my experience. And one of like a few, a couple of the things that have really helped me enjoy acting and my job has been my spiritual practice. Um, getting in touch with you know, my, my essence, my breath, the universe, um, because then that, that builds this foundation of trust and self love that allows me to play and pretend and try things and experiment and know that like, if it fails, it doesn't mean that I as a being have failed it, mm -hmm. it, it gives like this foundation of like, okay, this all isn't so serious, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's one thing that I would, that I, that I would recommend. And also, yeah, d developing a practice of like, whatever comes up in you, whatever different characters, because we all have different personas, different coping mechanisms that, uh, that surface when we're in different situations. And all of those are characters. Those are all opportunities to be creative and to play and to use as a channel for artistic expression. And so one of the things that I've learned, I've seen, you know, over the past few years, kind of all of the places where I am like, no, 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 nobody's supposed to see that. And the more that I do that, the more that I limit my, you know, what is possible for for the characters that I play. So it's like really pro allowing yourself space to just be with the different parts of yourself that come forward and not judging them, but learning more about them. Because then it's like, that's an opportunity for, for play. That's an opportunity for character play. That was beautiful. Okay, and this is the real last one because literally like Instagram is gonna cut us off in a minute. But <laughs> if, if you, I just realized because they told me the other day because mine always go long and they're like, after 60 minutes, it's gonna cut you off. Wow, um, we've already been on for an hour. It's 2.23. <laughs> wow. I mean, truly, thank you for your openness and for having these conversations, but this is what happens on my lives. They go really long. Um, if you had control to write an episode of Chicago Fire, Boy. what would you write that you want to see happen? If I had the control or the opportunity to write an episode of Chicago Fire, I would actually hand it over to a writer that I trust and could collaborate with. I would, I would probably work with... Um, one of the writers on our staff, her name is Ashley Cooper. She is, she wrote episode 10. Um, and it was like her debut. Um, she's from Chicago. Um, she is a black woman. She is so brilliant and clever and such a lover of film. Um, I think that that's another, another lesson I'm learning about creation. Um, and collaboration is like delegation. And it's like knowing what you're good at and knowing what you're not great at. I'm not really, you know, I'm not, I'm not well versed in writing. So if no, I- you can, But you can say what you want to see happen. Would it be course. the wedding episode? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to let that one go. What? yeah, I think what I would do if I had an opportunity to write an episode I would be super curious I'd like put a poll out to like the fans like all the hardcore shy hards see what they want get in tune with what I want people to know about Chicago maybe talk about some of the you know the segregation the racism the politics you know what I mean uh, cool. all infused with like the love and um, 
the power in the firehouse, you know what I mean? And, and all of the very strong communities in Chicago and, uh, you know, mix it all up and, and poop out an episode. <laughs> I love that. That's the, that's literally the perfect note to end on. Miranda Ray Mayo. Thank you so much for bringing light to this conversation and for your openness. Look at it. You have such a beautiful fan base. I love every, I like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's surreal. It's surreal to, to have this, this fan base and the support and love. I love all of y'all. And it's kind of, it's kind of overwhelming at times, like to, to accept, to accept all the love. So thanks for sticking with me on this journey of mm -hmm. discovering myself as an actress and discovering Stella. And um, yeah, I love all of you. Maybe you'll have to come back after finale so we can really chop it up. I would love that. I mean, if you listen, if you want me, you know what I'm saying? I do. I do. I'll hit up your people. Okay. My, I'll have my people call your people because. That would be so fun. I'm, I'm down. That would be a lot. Okay. You guys, you guys. Hi, NBC. I know you guys are watching. We're going to do this again. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, you big love, girl. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. You guys were awesome. And. I know that a lot of people are going to ask for the replay. We always take it down to cut it down and then it'll be back. So hopefully within the next 24 hours. So thank you. Thanks. Big love, big love. Bye guys.